Hi everyone, in this video we will be going through the various different types of questions regarding ideal gases. For these first two questions, we need to consider the molar volumes of ideal gases at STP and RTP. We can tell that these are at STP and RTP as the conditions are given to us in the question. The first question reads how much volume does 0.75 moles of CO2 gas occupy at 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa's. When we're approaching these questions, the first thing that we should do is we need to immediately recognize that the conditions in which the volume is being measured in is given as RTP, which is 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa. The molar volume of gas is given to you on your data sheet and it's given as 24.79 liters per mole at RTP. This means that the volume of 0.75 moles is going to be to 0.75 multiplied by 24.79 and that gives us a value of 19 liters to two significant figures. Similarly, the second question is asking how much volume 0.75 moles of CO2 gas occupy at 273 Kelvin and 100 kPa. 273 Kelvin and 100 kPa is STP, which given on our data sheet is equal to 22.71 liters per mole. So we do the same thing that we did earlier. The V of 0.75 moles is going to be equal to 0.75 multiplied by 22.71, and that is 17 liters to two significant figures. Remember, again, it's two significant figures because that's the least amount of precision we are given in the question. For this next question, it reads, what volume does 10 grams of O2 gas occupy at 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa? So for this question, we are given mass and we need to work out what volume it is. We are given again that the condition is RTP, 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa, which means that to work out the volume, we're eventually going to have to multiply some number of moles by 24.79. In this case, because we are given 10 grams of O2, we are able to use the formula N equals to M divided by MM, which in this case is going to be 10.0 divided by 16.0 multiplied by 2, and that is equal to 0.3215. Five. Then to find out the volume of gas, so at RTP, V equals to 24.79 moles per litre. So therefore, the volume of 0.3125 moles equals to 0.3125 multiplied by 24.79, which equals to 7.72 litres. And we're giving this as three significant figures. While this question is similar to the previous one, asking how many atoms of oxygen there are in 10 litres of carbon dioxide, now it is 0 degrees and 100 kPa, meaning that this is at STP. Also, because it asks how many atoms, it's an indication that we are going to have to convert moles by multiplying by Avogadro's number. So in 10 litres at STP, N equals to 10.0 divided by 22.71, because this is the molar volume given to us at STP. From this, we get a value of 0 0.440. From here, all we need to do is we need to multiply this number, 0 0.440, multiplied by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And if you're unsure about what this Avogadro's number is, you can watch the video on the introduction to quantitative chemistry. From this, we get a value of 2.65 times 10 to the 3 molecules of O2. Now remember, the question reads, how many atoms of oxygen there are? In every molecule of O2, there are two atoms of oxygen because the oxygen gas is a diatomic molecule. So what that means is atoms of oxygen is actually going to be double this number. 2.65 times 10 to the 23 times 2 equals 2. 5.30 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And we give our answer as three significant figures. Okay, so this next question, we are not given any standard conditions, STP nor RTP. So what we are going to have to do is we are going to have to use the ideal gas law. It's necessary for us to remember that the formula for an ideal gas is given as PV equals to N 
RT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles of that gas, R is the universal gas constant, and T is temperature given in Kelvin. So N is already given to us as 0 0.500 moles. We're also given that T is 350 Kelvin, and P is 150 kPa's. We want to calculate V, and that's given by rearranging this formula such that V equals to NRT on P. So all we need to do is simply, we just need to substitute these values into this equation. N is 0.5, R is the value that's given to us, it's 9.314, and then T is 350 Kelvin. All of this is over P, which is 150 kPa's, and we end up getting a value for the volume of 9.70 liters. Again, we're giving our answer as three significant figures. This next question reads, when excess solid calcium carbonate is added to a 200 milliliter solution of hydrochloric acid at 25 degrees at 100 kPa, 12.53 liters of gas is produced. What is the initial concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution? When we are looking at this question, what we need to be able to notice is that there is a need to identify which gas has actually been formed because there is 12.53 liters of gas produced. We know that a carbonate and acid reaction should produce carbon dioxide, a salt and water. So therefore, we are identifying that this gas that's produced is carbon dioxide. So let's begin by writing out our equation. Hydrochloric acid plus calcium carbonate is going to produce our salt CaCl2, water and carbon dioxide gas. And we can add a 2 in the front in order to balance our equation. So we are given that 12.53 liters of carbon dioxide gas was produced. This means that we are able to work out how many moles of gas there are, particularly because we are given that it's at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa, meaning that it is at RTP. Since we are calculating an RTP, one mole of gas is 24.79 liters. So at RTP, one mole of gas occupies 24.79 liters. So N of CO2, that equals to 12.53 divided by 24.79. And we get a value of 0 0.505 moles. From here, we can see that the ratio of carbon dioxide to hydrochloric acid is in a 1 to 2 ratio. This means that N of HCl equals to 2N of CO2, which equals to 0 0.505 times 2, and we get a value of 1.01 moles. The question, however, is asking what the initial concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution is. We know that the concentration is given by the formula C equals to N over V. This means it equals to 1.01 divided by a volume of 200 mils, which is 0 0.2 liters, and that gives us a value of 5.05 and we give our answer to three significant figures. In this next question, octane C8H18 undergoes complete combustion at 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa to produce carbon dioxide and water. What volume of carbon dioxide will be produced from one kilograms of octane? Since we know that we are going to be calculating volume, we will at some point need to multiply a molar amount by a molar volume. Furthermore, we also, need to be we also need to be able to recognize that since we are given a mass for the octane, which is one kilogram, we are going to need to use this value in order to calculate the number of moles for that particular compound. Since we know that we are going to be calculating volume, we will at some point need to multiply a molar amount by a molar volume. Furthermore, we also need to be, re we also need to be able to recognize that since we are given a mass for the octane, which is one kilogram, we are going to need to use this value in order to calculate the number of moles for that particular compound. We should always begin by writing an equation for our particular reaction. If you are still unsure about how to write formulas for reactions, please watch the lesson on balancing equation as well as the lesson from module 3 on different types of reactions. So we can begin writing our equation. So octane C8H18 is reacting with oxygen in a combustion reaction. And from that we are producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. We add the numbers 2, 25, 16, and 18 to balance our equation. Now the mass of octane which is present is given as 1 kilogram. From that 1 kilogram, we can use the formula N equals 2 M over MM to calculate the number of moles. This is going to be equal to 1000 divided by 12.01 times 8 plus 1.008 times 18. From that, we are going to get an answer which equals to 8.75 we know that by looking at our stoichiometric ratio, that the number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to 8 times the amount of octane. 
This means the number of moles of carbon dioxide gas which are going to be produced is eight times the N of octane. So the N of CO2 equals to eight times the N of C8H18, which is 8.755 times 18 times eight, and that gives us a value of 70.04 moles. Since Avogadro's law tells us that molar volume is constant for ideal gases at the same conditions, the volume per mole at RTP is 24.79. So to find our volume, we simply multiply the number of moles by its molar volume. So V of CO2 equals to N times 24.79. So that's 70.04 times 24.79. And we get a value of 1740 liters, giving our answer to three significant figures. The next question should be done in a similar manner as our previous question. However, this time rather than octane, it says that butane undergoes combustion at 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa to produce carbon dioxide and water. So we'll begin by writing our balanced equation just the same as we did earlier. C4H10 plus O2, sorry, these are both gaseous, are going to produce CO2 gas plus H2O vapor, which is gas. We balance it by adding our numbers. So the number of moles of butane gas equal to the mass, which is 1,000, divided by the molar mass, which is 12.01 times 4, plus 1.008 times 10, and that equals to 17.21 moles. The number of moles of carbon dioxide produced is equal to 4 times the amount of butane gas which has been burnt. We can tell this because the molar ratio is 8 to 2. So the V of CO2 equals to... 4 times 17.21, that's the number of moles of CO2, times 24.79, which is the molar volume at RTP, and that gives us a value of 1,710 litres. And that's to three significant figures again. For this reaction, we are going to be reacting a 50 milliliter solution of 1 mole per litre hydrochloric acid with 1 gram of magnesium at 298 Ks and 100 kPa's. The question is asking what volume of gas is going to be produced. Our equation is going to be given as a metal and acid reaction. Mg solid plus HCl aqueous is producing our salt MgCl2 and also hydrogen gas H2. Now this question is rather difficult because since we are given a limited value for both hydrochloric acid and magnesium, we are going to need to work out as well which of the two substances is a limiting reagent first. The number of moles of hydrochloric acid equals to 0 0.050, which is the volume, times 1, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.050 moles. The number of moles of magnesium is going to be equal to the mass, 1, divided by the molar mass, 24.31, which is equal to 0 0.0411 moles. So because magnesium and hydrochloric acid react in a ratio which is 2 to 1, we are going to need to have at least double the amount of magnesium in order to fully react all of the hydrochloric acid. Since hydrochloric acid and magnesium react in a 2 to 1 ratio, this means the amount of hydrochloric acid needed to fully react to magnesium is going to be equal to double the amount of this. Since we do not have enough hydrochloric acid, this is going to be our limiting reagent. And what this also means is that the total number of moles of magnesium which we are able to react is going to be 0 0.050 divided by 2. The ratio of magnesium to hydrogen gas is 1 to 1. So N of Mg equals to the N of H2 which equals to 0 0.050 divided by 2 which is 0 0.025. We know that this is given as RTP because it's 298 Ks and 100 kPa's. So at RTP, we know that one mole is going to be 24.79 liters. So that means the V of H2 equals to N of H2 multiplied by 24.79. And that's going to give us a value of 0 0.620 liters. And that's three significant figures. Now this final question reads that the fermentation of glucose produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. A student performs fermentation at RTP and measures the volume of gas produced over several days. Calculate the mass of glucose that reacted. If we look at the table, we should notice some trends. On day one, we have a rather large volume of gas produced, 
and the volume actually decreases day by day until by day four, it stops to produce any more gas whatsoever. We need to be able to interpret what the meaning of these results are. So what this is telling us is that in day four, all of the available reactant that was used to produce a maximum amount of carbon dioxide had been exhausted. Our goal will be to work backwards to find how many moles of carbon dioxide were produced, then use stoichiometry to find out the number of moles of glucose. So as usual, we begin by writing our equation. Here's our equation, and by adding these numbers, we have balanced it. So what we notice is that the carbon dioxide is produced from the glucose in a ratio of two to one. This means that the number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to double the moles of glucose. The number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to the volume, 0.92, divided by the molar volume of gas at RTP, which is 24.79, and that gives us a value of 0.0371. This value is the number of moles of carbon dioxide. So to find the number of moles of glucose, we need to divide this number by two. So N of C6H12O6 equals to 0.0371 divided by two, and that is 0. 0186. Now that we have the number of moles of glucose, we can work out what the mass of it is by multiplying the molar mass by the number of moles. So M of C6H12O6 equals to 0 0.0186 multiplied by 12.01 times 6 plus 1.0082 12 plus 16 times 6 and we get a value of 3.3 grams. And that's to two significant figures.